Well, hi there. This is Tyrannosaurus rex, possibly the coolest, largest, and most powerful land predator to ever walk the earth, and probably the most famous and well-studied of all dinosaurs. A dinosaur so awesome that it seems cliche to say that it's your favorite, but it is my favorite. At least I think it is. The Tyrant Lizard King. But did you know that it isn't the only Tyrannosaur? It isn't the only Tyrant Lizard. In fact, there is an entire family of Tyrant Lizards, the Tyrannosauridae, with about 13 distinct genera. And today, I want to introduce you to all 13 of the Tyrannosaurids, find out which one is actually the coolest, and which of the 13 is the smallest Tyrant Lizard to have ever walked the Earth. Happy Dinosaur December! The family Tyrannosauridae is a clade of Coelurosaurian theropod dinosaurs. If you know anything about Tyrannosaurus rex, you probably know that it was a big bipedal carnivore with a big head and little arms. I'm just not sure how well this plan was thought through, master. And you probably know that they only had two fingers on each of those little arms. And this was true of all of the Tyrannosaurids, though some did possess small vestigial third fingers. You may have even noticed that they, like all Tyrannosaurids, have an S-shaped neck. But there are probably a lot of things about T-Rex and other Tyrannosaurids that you've never noticed before, but you won't be able to unsee after today. And they're pretty much all related to two things, running and bite force. The Tyrannosaurids were the largest carnivores around almost everywhere they lived. But no matter where you would look, there were no other dinosaurs that could bite with the same kind of power that Tyrannosaurids could muster. Their skull was built for strength. I mean, just look at how much bone is in the skull of Tyrannosaurus rex. Now compare that to Giganotosaurus. Giganotosaurus was almost exactly the same size as T-Rex, but the skull is much narrower and full of big holes. The antorbital fenestra is huge, as is the hole in the lower jaw called the mandibular fenestra. That helps keep the skull light, but it comes at the expense of strength. The Tyrannosaur skull is built much more for strength, as evidenced by its overall width and comparatively small fenestrae. In all other dinosaurs, there are paired, unfused nasal bones. But in the Tyrannosaurids, those bones are fused into a single arch-shaped bone, resulting in greatly increased strength. So the skull is strong enough to handle a lot of bite force. But what about the muscles? On top of the skull is a ridge called a sagittal crest. You see these today in animals like bears, wolves, and male gorillas. That ridge gives additional surface area for the attachment of large and powerful jaw muscles. So the skull was strong enough, and they had the muscles to bite incredibly hard, but could their teeth handle all that force? Yes. For starters, as long as their teeth are, the roots are much longer than the part of the tooth that extends out of the skull. They're like banana-shaped icebergs of death. But in addition to those long roots, those banana-shaped tyrannosaurid teeth look completely different from those of other dinosaurs. If you look at the teeth of other theropods, like raptors, allosaurids, or even giganotosaurus, you will notice that the teeth are blade-like in shape, thin and sharp for cutting off pieces of flesh. That isn't what tyrannosaurid teeth look like. The bite force of a tyrannosaurid would shatter those teeth. Ignore for a second the teeth at the front of the mouth, the premaxillary teeth, and look back at all of the big postmaxillary teeth. Yes, they're huge, but if you look at them in cross-section, they're almost circular, more like a javelin than a knife, much stronger. All in all, you're looking at a bite force between 35,000 and 57,000 newtons. For comparison, the strongest bite force of any living land carnivore, the polar bear, is a little over 1,600 newtons. And your bite force is about 300 newtons. Even Giganotosaurus had a bite force of only around 6,000 newtons. So 35 to 57,000 newtons of force is astronomical. And yet, those premaxillary teeth are small. Have you ever noticed how short those premaxillary teeth are on Tyrannosaurids? They are small and round, with a flat back giving them a cross-sectional shape of a capital D. These teeth are built to carefully strip flesh off of bones and are a diagnostic feature of Tyrannosaurids. So that covers the bite. What about the running? I mean, 
Running can be difficult when you have a huge heavy head. But the head is offset to some degree by the huge thick counterweight tail of Tyrannosaurids that places the center of mass right at the pelvis. The legs are obviously considerably longer than their arms, but they're disproportionately long, some of the longest for their size of any theropod. But one of the most recognizable features of Tyrannosaurids are their feet. Like most theropods, they walk up on their toes, with three toes touching the ground and a fourth held off of the ground. But if you get a good look at the three bones of the foot, the metatarsals, you'll notice that they look very different from the metatarsals of other large theropods. Most large theropods have three metatarsal bones that run parallel to one another all the way to the ankle. But in a few groups, you see the two outer metatarsals are so large that they pinch off the middle metatarsal, creating a structure known as an arctometatarsus. This arctometatarsalian condition is found in some of the smaller running theropods, such as the ornithomimids and the troodontids, but also in the later tyrannosaurids. It wasn't found in the ancestors of tyrannosaurids, however, species like DeLong, suggesting that it evolved independently in the tyrannosaurids from other groups like the ornithomimosaurs. This is called convergent evolution. Similar features that evolved for similar reasons, but aren't inherited from shared ancestors. The arctometatarsus makes the foot very rigid. Most dinosaurs would lose quite a bit of energy due to flexion of the bones during movement, but that is greatly reduced in dinosaurs with this arctometatarsus, like the later tyrannosaurids. So in a nutshell, if you want to identify a tyrannosaurid, look for fused nasal bones, spike-shaped post-maxillary teeth, short, D-shaped pre-maxillary teeth, and, in many cases, an arctometatarsus. Which, Entertainingly enough, is what allowed me to notice that the Carnotaurus skeleton at Disney World is actually just a small Tyrannosaurid with a Carnotaurus skull on top. Anyway, with all of that said, let's dig into the 13 genera of Tyrannosaurids known today and see if we can determine which of the 13 is the smallest and whether any of them are as cool or even cooler than the king. And let's start with the king. Tyrannosaurus rex. We know more about Tyrannosaurus rex than probably any other dinosaur of the Mesozoic era. And of course we do. If you're going to study dinosaurs, there would have to be some temptation to study the coolest one. It is, as we learned earlier this month, likely the most massive of all theropods. Combine that with their unreal bite force and running ability, and this was just the super grizzly bear of Cretaceous North America. T-Rex, like other Tyrannosaurids, had reduced forelimbs with two fingers, though not the smallest for its size among the Tyrannosaurids, and about 60 teeth in its head. Keep track of the number, as this is one of the best ways to distinguish Tyrannosaurids. The number tends to go down as they get bigger. Tyrannosaurus rex was the largest of them all, coming in at well over 12 meters, 40 feet, and almost 9,000 kilos, around 20,000 pounds. They stood almost 4 meters, 13 feet tall at the hips, and were the giant land predator of North America until the extinction event at the end of the Cretaceous, which we will discuss in some detail later this month. So now might be a good time to subscribe and click the little bell if you haven't just yet. Dinosaur December! There is clear evidence that T-Rex was a hunter, but also a scavenger. It had the largest eyes and likely the best vision of any land animal ever. And the wide rear of the skull allowed those eyes to face forward, allowing T-Rex to have excellent binocular vision. Combine that with a great sense of smell. They were not as fast as many smaller theropods due to their immense bulk, but they could see and smell you from hundreds of meters away, and there would be little that you could do about it after that. It was likely the most formidable land predator the world has ever known. And while T-Rex was ruling over the island continent of Laramidia, what is now North America, its closest known relative, Tarbosaurus, was dominating Asia. Tarbosaurus is so similar to Tyrannosaurus rex that there has been considerable debate as to whether or not it should simply be considered another species of Tyrannosaurus. Tarbosaurus meaning alarming lizard. And fair enough. It was about 10 meters, 33 feet long, 3 meters, 10 feet at the hip, and weighed as much as 4,500 kilos, about 10,000 pounds. Smaller than the king, but alarming enough, even though it did have, proportionally, the smallest arms of any Tyrannosaurid, and sporting 58 to 64 teeth, 
Because its skull is not as wide at the rear, it likely did not have as good of binocular vision as its North American cousin, but it was still the king of Asia until the end of the Cretaceous. The next closest relative to the Tyrannosaurus rex is another Asian Tyrannosaurid, Zhukeng Tyrannus. Honestly, to the untrained eye, it is very difficult to distinguish Zhukeng Tyrannus from Tarbosaurus. And that is why earlier phylogenies tended to place Zhukeng Tyrannus and Tarbosaurus together in a clade more closely related to one another than to Tyrannosaurus rex. As we've learned more, it seems that T-Rex and Tarbosaurus are more closely related, but not by much. One Zhukeng Tyrannus specimen has been estimated to be about 9.6 meters, nearly 32 feet long, 2.9 meters or 9.5 feet tall at the hips, and to weigh around 4,000 kilos or 8,800 pounds. Other estimates have placed Zhukeng Tyrannus as almost exactly the same size as Tarbosaurus. It was first described in 2011, and we may get a better picture of the size to which it could grow as we learn more about them. Obviously, given that these are found in the same basic part of the world as Tarbosaurus, we're also from the late Cretaceous, and are about the exact same size, it is important to be able to distinguish between the two. Well, the distinguishing feature that can be used to differentiate Zhukeng Tyrannus from any other Tyrannosaurid is a horizontal shelf present on the maxilla bone, which is the bone on the side of the skull that makes up most of the upper jaw. And if you notice, Tyrannosaurs usually have two holes, fenestrae, between the eye and the nose. The larger is called the antorbital fenestra, and the smaller, more anterior fenestra, is called the maxillary fenestra. Zhukeng Tyrannus has a rounded notch at the front edge of that maxillary fenestra. To this point, we don't have enough teeth to tell you exactly how many they had, though they appear to have had longer serrations than those of any other Tyrannosaurid. I'd like to take a moment just to point you to this rad skeleton. I bought this skeleton for my son Owen a few years back, and it is awesome and actually not even all that expensive. And we have a link to it down in the description for this video, as well as a link to our Amazon store, which if you use the links, we've got links to all kinds of stuff that you might need as say a reptile keeper or just a dinosaur fanatic. And we will have a lot of links to some really cool models and some other cool dinosaur things that you're gonna wanna see down in our Amazon store. And if you buy them, the price doesn't change for you, but it does help support the channel. So if you're looking for a way to support Clint's Reptile, and content like this, and maybe you can't quite afford to support us on Patreon, or, or you just want to get a rad T-Rex, why not use our link? The next closest relatives after Tarbosaurus and Zhukeng Tyrannus would be the two genera in the clade Despletosaurini. Those would be Despletosaurus and Thanatotheristes. Since both are equally related to Tyrannosaurus rex, I will simply start with the namesake of the clade, Despletosaurus, and then make my way over to Thanatotheristes. Despletosaurus, the frightful lizard, like Tyrannosaurus rex, lived on the island continent of Laramidia, now known as North America, in the late Cretaceous, but a bit before T. rex came around. It was also considerably smaller, smaller's good, right? Though still frightfully big, and at around eight or nine meters long. That's 26 to 30 feet, 2,000 to 3,000 kilos, 4,400 to 6,600 pounds, and standing just under three meters, nine feet tall at the hips. It could be distinguished from other Tyrannosaurids by the presence of a very rough surface to the maxilla bone of the upper jaw, pronounced crests around the eye, and an upright oval shape to the orbit, unlike the bizarre keyhole-shaped eye socket of T-Rex. It had about 72 teeth, more than T-Rex, and the longest arms relative to its body size of any Tyrannosaurid. Though, that's a bit like being the world's biggest chihuahua. They're still tiny. Their closest relatives, the Natotheristes, the Death Harvester, was found in Canada in the late Cretaceous just before their cousins, the Despletosaurs. Though we know of this dinosaur mostly from an incomplete subadult specimen, it appears to have been similar in size to Despletosaurus. Still big enough to be deemed the death harvester and not like Canada's little cutie. And it also possessed about the same number of teeth, over 70, which is a lot for a Tyrannosaurid. And I will tell you, it would take an extremely trained eye to distinguish between the two. That's probably why it wasn't identified as being a distinct species until 10 years after its discovery. All of the Tyrannosaurids that we have discussed so far are more closely related to one another than they are to anything else. Nanuxaurus 
the polar bear lizard of the late Cretaceous would be their next closest relative. It's crazy that polar bear lizard is the cutest name for a tyrannosaur so far, given that the polar bear is the largest land carnivore alive today. Anyway, the polar bear lizard is only known from a partial skull and some teeth found in Alaska. Thus, our knowledge of them is somewhat limited. It now appears that they were around 7 meters, 22 feet in length. But given how limited our fossil evidence is about them, it is really difficult to say with much confidence how big they were. What is cool is that Alaska in the late Cretaceous was still a place where temperatures regularly got below freezing, and food would have been scarce in the winter. And it's really fun to hypothesize about how these polar bear tyrannosaurids survived in such an inhospitable environment. The next closest relatives to T-Rex and the other tyrannosaurids we have discussed so far would be the Dynamoterror, Teratophonius, and Lithronax. The Powerful Terror, the Monster Murderer, and the Gore King. So let's start with Dynamo Terror, the Powerful Terror. This Tyrannosaur from Lake Cretaceous, New Mexico was just named in 2018. It is known from a partial subadult or adult specimen that was estimated to be around 9 meters, 30 feet long. So about the same size as Displetosaurus. And its lack of really unique features have led some to argue that it might not be unique from one of its closest relatives, Teratophonius, the monster murderer, which is about the same size and existed in about the same time in southern Utah. So in about the same exact place as they probably had no respect for future state borders. Their closest relative, Lithronax, the Gore King is another Utah native Tyrannosaurid, though this one is a bit older and the smallest Tyrannosaurid we've encountered so far. And this model Lithronax was sent to us by Mike at Antidiluvian Animals. I first discovered Mike's work on Instagram and it is truly amazing. We'll put a link to his Instagram and ours in the description. Now the Gore King is the smallest Tyrannosaurid that we've encountered so far. Somewhere between 5 and 8 meters in length, that's 16 to 26 feet, and between 500 and 2,500 kilos, 1,100 to 5,500 pounds. That is a pretty wide range because this is another species known from a single incomplete specimen. It can be differentiated from most other Tyrannosaurids because the maxilla bone has only 11 tooth sockets, where most other Tyrannosaurids have 12 or more. While the estimates of its size vary, even the high-end estimate would make it the smallest Tyrannosaur we have seen so far. And with only four more Tyrannosaurids left to examine, we might just have our winner. But all of the remaining Tyrannosaurids are less closely related to T-Rex, the largest of them all, than is our Utah friend Lithronax. So let's not crown the Gore King as the smallest Tyrannosaur just yet. All of the Tyrannosaurids that we have looked at to this point are in a single clade within the subfamily Tyrannosaurinae. But the Tyrannosaurinae has a second clade called Aliora mini, a word that literally means different branch, which contains two different genera, Alioramus and Gyanzosaurus, both of which are long-snouted and found in Asia. The long snout and comparatively small teeth of this group suggest that these Tyrannosaurids fed on much smaller prey than did the Tyrannosaurids that we've examined to this point. Alioramus, the different branch, certainly has a less horrifying name than every member of the last branch of Tyrannosaurids that we looked at. And in addition to having smaller teeth than the first branch, it was also probably smaller. At 5 to 6 meters, 16 to 20 feet, and weighing 385 to 700 kilos, 850 to 1500 pounds, only our pal Lithronax may have been smaller. Oh, but the other branch, looks to have likely been smaller even than the Gore King. Alioramus was found near the end of the Cretaceous, around the same time as Tarbosaurus, in Mongolia. It can be identified by five crests protruding from the nasal bones, and by its 76 to 78 teeth, the most of any Tyrannosaurid. As we know that the number of teeth is generally negatively correlated with size, we might have a winner. But let's take a look at its closest relative. Gyanzosaurus. Gyanzosaurus has, by far, the lamest Tyrannosaurid name so far. It literally just means Gyanzo lizard. Gyanzo being the place in China where it was found. 
not soul shredder, not gut ripper monster. I mean, they really missed out on a genuine opportunity. Unless Gianzhou, China is a really scary place. And you know, what do I know? Maybe it's the most terrifying place on earth. What I do know is that Gianzhousaurus was not the smallest Tyrannosaurid. Coming in at a length of 6.3 meters, 21 feet, 750 to 757 kilos, which is like 1,653 to 1,669 pounds, and standing 2 meters, 6.6 .6 feet tall at the hips, and possibly growing as large as 7.5 to 9 meters, 25 to 30 feet. It still had the long, thin jaws of its Mongolian cousin, Allioramus, but fewer total teeth and was, again, somewhat larger. So Allioramus appears to be the smallest of the Tyrannosaurinae, but we still haven't seen all of the Tyrannosaurids, because there are two more Tyrannosaurids in the subfamily Albertosaurinae. Albertosaurinae differs in that its members were built more for speed and less for power, being more lightly built with longer, flatter skulls than Tyrannosaurinae, with round eye sockets, making them somewhat easy to identify. You know Tyrannosaurus has this really weird eye socket. They also had shorter ilia bones, as they were overall lighter, and had proportionally longer tibiae, giving them longer legs and a longer stride length than the Tyrannosaurinae. Now, the two genera within the Albertosaurinae are the Albertosaurus, the Alberta lizard, like Canada, and Gorgosaurus, the dreadful lizard. Nice to see someone still trying to give scary names to Tyrannosaurids. Though I have heard that Canadian winters can be pretty dreadful too. Eh, you hosers? So let's talk about the tyrant lizard of the Great White North, Albertosaurus. Albertosaurus lived in Alberta, Canada and potentially other parts of Western North America in the late Cretaceous, about the same time as our current king of smallness, Allioramus, was living in Mongolia. But Albertosaurus was certainly larger, 8 to 9 meters, 26 to 30 feet, and weighing 1,700 to 2,500 kilos, 3,800 to 5,600 pounds. That's up there with Dynamo Terror and Despletosaurus in length, but probably a little lighter, as those were both Tyrannosaurines, and were likely a bit heavier for their length compared to Albertosaurus. Albertosaurus was probably a bit taller due to its longer tibiae, standing 3.4 meters, 11 feet at the hip. And unlike many of the species we've discussed so far, Albertosaurus is known not from only a few fragmentary fossils, but rather dozens of largely complete individuals. This includes 26 individuals of varying ages that were found all in the same place, which has greatly increased our knowledge of this awesome, but not small, Canadian tyrant. This is one of the few theropods, in fact only two, of which we have preserved skin impressions, the other being Carnotaurus, one of my favorite dinosaurs of all, and one I would love to cover in the future, you know, if you're into that kind of thing. These skin impressions show scales, but no indication of feathers, like you find in other theropod lineages, like the Manny Raptora that we covered previously. Albertosaurus possessed about 58 teeth, which is fewer than its closest relative, Gorgosaurus. And since we know that tooth number is negatively correlated with size, this means that Gorgosaurus may have been smaller than Albertosaurus. But was it? Well, Gorgosaurus, the dreadful lizard, had about 62 teeth, fewer than Albertosaurus, but nowhere near the 76 to 78 teeth of Allioramus. So things are looking good for our current leader. It was found in North America in the late Cretaceous a few million years before Albertosaurus. Like Albertosaurus, it had a long, flat skull and long legs compared to other Tyrannosaurids. In fact, the two are so similar that some have suggested that Gorgosaurus is just a species of Albertosaurus, or a direct ancestor, which seems very plausible. But the question remains, was it smaller than Allioramus? And the answer is... nope. Gorgosaurus was roughly the exact same size as Albertosaurus, 8 to 9 meters, 26 to 30 feet, and weighing about the same as well. And that makes Allioramus, at 16 to 20 feet, our undisputed champion. Or does it? Because I have heard about at least a couple of dinosaurs, namely Nanotyrannus and Dilong, among others, that are said to be much smaller still. Well, as of right now, Nanotyrannus appears to be a juvenile Tyrannosaurid, probably Tyrannosaurus rex. So while it is smaller than an adult Allioramus, as an adult it was probably the largest theropod of them all, at least by mass. 
Many of the other small tyrannosaurids, like Raptorex, also now appear to be juveniles of other larger tyrannosaurids as well. But what about DeLong? DeLong, the emperor dragon, was truly small. Not could it still eat a polar bear in a sitting small, like Aliaramus, like I might want one for a pet small. Two meters, maybe smaller still. But it wasn't a tyrannosaurid. There is a debate as to whether or not it is even part of the larger clade that includes the tyrannosaurids, called the Tyrannosauroidea. And some of the tyrannosauroids were smaller than Aliaramus. But as of today, Aliaramus is the smallest known tyrannosaurid. But don't let that fact and its lame name fool you. If you were spotted by one, you wouldn't stand a chance. But is it the coolest? As always, like and subscribe, and we hope to see you real soon. Uh, I saw a picture of a mantar, which is... I saw that too. <laughs> <laughs> half man, half another man. <laughs> <laughs> I think I took Have a you seen this? No. Hold on. Okay. I know it's gonna be horrifying unless it just looks like a man. Here, go show him. <laughs> 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 I love that. It's like a different sized man. Yeah. <laughs> and that's exactly what it is because basically you just you have an entire horse with a torso growing out of its neck. Yeah. And so why not? <laughs> and, like, the bottom man is like going all out, running at full speed. The top man is just chilling, <laughs> yeah. enjoying the ride. <laughs> man, <darn. laughs> okay. <laughs> I'm really glad you brought that to my attention. <laughs> <laughs> Just not sure how well this plan was thought through. Master? What's going on? Why aren't you seizing the boy? <laughs> Thank <laughs> you.